Hello, my name is Michal Hutsko and welcome to another lecture of our REST API class. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can connect your REST API written in Django to the PostgreSQL. In the previous lesson, we ended up with the homework where you were asked to, you know, create a new model which will represent teachers in our information system. If you have done this, you have maybe found out that there is a problem. You have to create a new migrations and you need to apply these migrations in order for your program to work, to be able to communicate with the database. And uh, before we move to the part where I will show you how you can connect your application to the PostgreSQL, which is quite simple, let's talk a little bit about these migrations. Migrations can be a little bit trickier. They help us to maintain the state of the database in the code form. And this is very beneficial because you have a code representations of your schema in the relational database. And there are a lot of relational databases, not just SQLite. For example, today we're going to talk about PostgreSQL, but you can have, for example, database in MySQL or Mar MariaDB. And let's say one day you will decide to change your database. If you are applying ORM, which we were talking previously, and you are creating these migrations files, it is for you very simple to migrate from one database into another database. And that's the greatest benefit of migrations. But sometimes these migrations can delete some parts of your database. Imagine one day you decide like you no longer need this column anymore and you will write the migration which will delete some of these columns and you will apply this, for example, in your production. By deleting this column, you will lose all the information, let's say about names of subjects which you have stored in your, uh, let's say, SQL. The migration mechanism is so effective that it allows you to reverse your last migrations. You can, you know, move in the migration history, for example, to an initial migration if you want. But if you delete something, it's very hard to move back in time because the data is no longer available. The data is gone. For this reason, I'm making this video to give you some, some important tips and tricks how you should always apply migration. The rule number one, many times you are working in a team where the other guys or colleagues are sending you different migrations file to apply in your local database when you are developing something together. The rule number one is trust only yourself. Never trust someone else, even if it is like a senior software developer. You always have to trust yourself. Always double check the migration. You need to be 100% sure you understand what is happening in this migration. Second rule, always, always back up your database first. If you are using SQLite, it's as simple as copying this file to some different location. But if you are using some complicated database solutions, like let's say PostgreSQL or some, you know, flavor of PostgreSQL, enterprise flavor of PostgreSQL, then it's a little bit trickier. Maybe you are not a database administrator and you don't have access to this PostgreSQL which is running in the production, for example, if you are responsible for applying this migration in the production. In this case, you should immediately contact the database administrator and let him know that he or she should do the, the backup for you. Never apply anything in production without the backup. This is important. Please keep this in mind. Okay, so always backup your solutions. Never trust anyone else, just you. You need to read the code, okay? And always back up, always back up, always back up, always back up. This is important. Fine. The next good trick or tip is you should never delete anything from your database or at least for a certain period of time. So imagine you want to delete some column and you are not sure if it's, it's, if it's safe to delete it or not. I would do following. First, I will just keep the column in database, but I will not use it in the views, for example, if I'm implementing some REST API. I will keep it there for, let's say, two years. And if nobody will ask about this column, then I will be sure I can delete this column. But of course, I will first create some backup, just to be 100% sure. Okay, so these are three main important tips and tricks how you should apply migrations in the production sphere or in the production environment, okay? So let's go to the Visual Studio code. And I, I was mentioning that you can move in the migration history just briefly to show you how you can do this. Okay, I need to choose my uh, my uh, Python interpreter because I, I have created a new session. But uh, if you want to move in a history of your migration, you can apply the command Python, uh, manage py, migrate. And here you need to specify the name of your application. So in this case, it's school application. And here you can specify the name of the migration where you would like to move. In this case, for example, if there would be like a lot of other migrations, for example, if you have created this new table for your teachers, there, I'm 100% sure you have here another migration. 
and you applied it and you would like to go back in time, you can just apply it like this Python manage by migrate, but because I'm already in this migration, nothing will happen. Okay. So this was just a short break to talk about migrations. Okay. And let's go next to the main part of this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect to another database, which is not SQLite 3, but it's in this case, PostgreSQL. First thing, you need your PostgreSQL instance running in your local computer. And this tutorial is not about showing you how you can do this. For the rest of this video, you can stick with SQLite 3 if you want. You don't need a PostgreSQL. I will just show you how you can do it. Everything will work fine even with SQLite 3 if you'd like to. But for those of you who are interested and who have, who have the PostgreSQL installed in your computer, I will show you how to do it. In the description of this video, you can find the manual how you can install the PostgreSQL on your local computer. I will also send you there a link where, which will show you how you can do this with the Docker because I'm a big Docker fan, I'm a DevOps guy, I like to use Docker and Kubernetes, but in this tutorial, there is no space or I don't want to bother you with the Docker information. If you would like to see some, some Docker videos or some Docker tutorial, let me know, I will do it. Okay, so I'm assuming you have your uh, PostgreSQL installed. I will open now a client tool, which is called PG Admin. This PG Admin helps me to check the data in my PostgreSQL instance. I have my local PostgreSQL running in my Windows system and you can see I have here two databases. You don't need to have them there if you want. We will create everything from scratch. Just to let you know, this is my current state. It looks like this. I'm able to connect to PG Admin. I will use this to show you how the database will change as I will connect there. Perfect. The next thing what I need to do is to change the settings of the project, not the application, but the project. I go to school project and go to the settings.py and scroll down to the database section. It's uh, here. Yeah. As you can see here right now, the database engine is specified as Django DB backends SQLite 3. And here I specified the base directory, which is the root directory of my current project. And I'm saying like in this db.sqlite 3 file, there is whole SQLite 3 database, but I don't want to do this. I would like to create a connection to a PostgreSQL. Let's make a quick cut. I'm going to download from internet the connection for PostgreSQL because it's like too boring to remember for all the time. So the database connection, which you can find specified at this beautiful link, which is auto-generated whenever you create a new project in your Django, looks like this. It's called a default because I'm specifying a default connection. You can then, then you know, split it to test at ATC, but I ain't going to talk about this right now. And here you specified your engine, your driver, which will connect to PostgreSQL. Okay, if you are not familiar with database drivers, it basically means like from your application, you can connect into a database with many different drivers. Some of them are useful for one thing and some of them are useful for the other, another thing. Uh, in the current setup, we're going to use Psycho PG2 driver, which is one of the most popular drivers for PostgreSQL, but there are also other ones, which I maybe prefer, for example, if you are working with big data. Right now, this is not about drivers. Okay, I need to concentrate on the main topic here. The next part is specifying the name of the database, which I would like to connect. In this case, it's called school test. I will call it school just for now. Here you specify your database user. In the PostgreSQL in my current installation, I have a Postgres user, okay? With the password of Postgres. The here is the biggest anti-pattern, right? You should never specify your password to a database as a plain text. The good practice is to, you, is to do it like OS, get, env, and load the value from your environment variables. Okay. And when I will show you how you can deploy your thing to, let's say, to AWS, if you will be interested in, yeah, I, I can show this to you. I will use setup like this with this OS get env specified here, but currently, right now, because we are learning and we are new to this topic, I will put here just password in the plain text, but that's the biggest anti-pattern. Well, in general, it's a biggest anti-pattern to put anything here just as a plain text. You can load everything from the configuration variables, yeah. If you're familiar with the Kubernetes from config maps or from, from the secrets, right? But right now, we are learning, I put it like this. Here I specified the host because the PostgreSQL is running in my computer, I'm specifying the local host and a port. In this case, this is the general port for PostgreSQL 5432. Now, by specifying this, you are almost done. The next thing what you need to do, you need to install this driver or, or library to this driver into your Python. So in order to do this, you go here and you put command like Python, uh, sorry, pip, yep, pip, install, and the name of the driver, in this case, PsychoPG2. Just remember, I'm inside my virtual environment, just to keep things clear. So pip install, because I have it already installed, just saying like requirements already satisfied. In your case, this can take longer. Maybe you're going to download something, install something. It's up to you. It will be there. 
Fine, after installing this, you are almost ready to go. But the thing which you need to create right now is the database. Because the migrations and the Django cannot create the database by itself. Of course, it, it can in some case, but the good practice is to create the database manually because you would like to have the full control of the database or your, uh, you know, uh, PostgreSQL admin would like to create it by on her own or on his own. So I'm going to my PG admin and I create a right click on the database and I go to create database and here I specify the name of the database. In this case, it's cool. The key part here, you need to specify the owner, okay? The Postgres in this case, because that's my user, which will connect there. That's the user from the settings, which I specified here, okay? Without this, this there will be some problems. So I, I press the save button and in a couple of seconds, I will have a new database here listed in the database section. So let's wait a couple of seconds. And here is my database. If I go to schemas, into the tables, currently that's empty. Perfect. So by having this database created, right now you can run your migrations. Why do we want to run the migrations? Because we need to specify the tables, okay? We don't need to run the SQL commands. We will run the Python commands, which are listed in the migrations folder right now. This initial that by. So, so in order to do this, you run Python, manage py and migrate. And by running this, the Python, the Django will install every, or, or will create every table. will run every migration, not just for this, but also for all the other applications which are listed in the install apps, as I mentioned in the previous videos. So if I go now and I reload this part, it's the refresh button, and I click here, suddenly we have all the tables here. Just to prove you that I'm doing everything correctly, I will also delete this dbsqlite3 file from the git. We no longer need it because everything is stored right now in the PostgreSQL. And just to prove you my point, I run Python, manage py, and uh, run server command. And as I mentioned, if you would like to continue with me and you don't have the PostgreSQL or you don't know how to create the PostgreSQL, you can stick with the SQLite 3. It's fine. I'm just showing this for, uh, for, for everyone else. So right now, the question is, what will be in the database when I go for the get subjects? It will be an empty array. Nothing is there. I deleted everything. I recreated the database. Everything is empty. So we need to create a subject and there we have an endpoint for it. And let's create the chemistry. And I, if I create the chemistry, I go to the subjects. I select chemistry. The chemistry is there. If I go for the detailed of the ID one, I see it's chemistry. It's there. Just to prove you, I'm doing everything correctly. I click here, view all rows and a couple of seconds, chemistry is there. How amazing is that? Well, show you also just to prove you if I run put and change the subject with ID one to XXXXX, I go back to subject ID one XXXXX and I can even delete it from here like this. And if I go to subject, everything is empty. How cool is that? In order to connect to PostgreSQL, I didn't have to change anything. Yeah, just the specification of the driver, just the engine part and it's working out of the box. If you would like to connect to MariaDB or to MySQL, no problems. You just specify the driver. That's the power of ORM. To be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of ORM. I prefer to write my own, you know, DSL queries and stuff like this. But uh, this is a most common practice out there. A lot of people are using it, even for production solutions. I hope you like this part of this, uh, well, this lecture. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And I hope I will see you in the next one.